Welcome to Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed. I'm Dr. Edmund Sokowski. We have a very interesting show for you today. You know, the whole world runs on energy. If you go and you flick on a light switch to watch your TV or to shave in the morning, you have, you're using electricity, that's energy. If you click on your furnace, it's either run by gas, electric, oil, propane, that's all energy. You get in your car, it's gasoline, diesel, electric, it's all energy. And although there are some forces out there that want to take that energy from us, and we s seem not to have the ability to control that anymore, and they're telling us they're going to limit our energy, you know, shut down our gas wells, shut down our, our uh, pipelines, shut down our coal, they're telling us they're going to do that. What are we going to do? Well, maybe as an individual, we don't have control of that. But here's the interesting factor. Your body is all energy. It runs completely off of energy. How you get that energy is our conversation today with my special guest, Dr. Gary Fiver. Dr. Fiver, welcome to Health and Wellness with always, Dr. Ed. Always a pleasure. You know, Dr. Fiver and I talk all the time. He's a frequent guest on my radio show, Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed, every Saturday morning at 9 a.m. on AM 1250, The Answer. And we always have these in-depth conversations privately, and we talk a lot about how the body operates. Dr. Fiber is a chiropractor of how many years? 45 Gary? this year. 45 years. And, you know, I remember at a time, even in my life, when, when I heard the term chiropractor, and chiropractors are physicians, they're medically trained. I would go, oh, and I actually remember as a little kid going to a chiropractor with my dad, not for me, for him, and just kind of like poo pooing it. You know, as a, as a little stupid kid, is, you know, <laughs> it has all the answers, right? Of course. And and uh, actually hearing him moan, but he was barely walking in there to the chiropractic office. But that's all changed because he, I think that there was a time where, where the medical industry poo-pooed chiropractic care because they wanted this drug and surgery concept. But chiropractors actually fix the flow of energy in the body. How do we do that? It's actually very interesting because chiropractic is still a question for a number of people, but we deal mainly with the nervous system. We want to balance the energy flow from the brain through the spinal cord out to every part of the body. Now, there can be a number of ways that can be irritated. It can be irritated physically, with we, which a lot of people go to a chiropractor and they'll say, oh, my back's out of place. Well, it just means something's not moving right in the spine and it can short circuit things. Muscles can cause entrapment. The, what you eat can affect the way your nervous system functions. We focus a lot. We were probably the only profession early on in this country to deal with what we call health and wellness, trying to find the real cause, not covered the root, up. The root cause. The root cause, the initial cause, and at times underlying complicating factors, which people don't know they have because they're so motivated to change or remove symptoms. Symptoms are a sign something's going wrong. It's very, it's simple. It's like if you went home tonight and if you have more than one level in your house and you went upstairs and none of the lights were on, would you check all of the light bulbs? Probably not. You'd probably go to the circuit breaker panel. Why? That's where the energy comes from. It's kind of like your brain. Your brain is where all these electrical functions, impulses start and it transmits through the nervous system. Something that's interesting, maybe not to anybody but me. But if you took all the nerves out of the body and laid them end to end, they would go all the way around this planet. You know, it was really in interesting for me in Vegas. I saw one of those shows where, where the bodies are encapsulated. And, right. and so they had the whole nervous system. It was dyed. And it was like a universe. It literally looked like you were looking at a universe of, of these fibers. And I know when I was in school, we were dissecting cadavers. We were fine-tuning those little nerves along with the blood vessels uh, and, and being careful not to, to cut them so that we could isolate them and learn where they go to. And, and somehow medicine became this everything disconnected. There's a specialist for everything. And you don't look at it medically as a holistic body. Chiropractors seem to have done that from the get-go. It has been, uh, and actually interesting, chiropractic started in 1895 officially, and actually Palmer, who was the chiropractor 
or the person that became a chiropractor first. And there was a school, Palmer. Palmer Chiropractic still exists in Davenport, Iowa. Yeah. There's branches of it in Florida and California. But it was interesting that at the time, he had a big clinic down there, but he had medical doctors working with him in his clinic. That was probably the first integrated clinics that existed, but of course then it sort of went the other way because unfortunately it was looked at as competition. It was looked at as you're better than us, we're better than you, whatever. Let's not forget the patients and why we're really there. So it is interesting how it's changed. There are still factions, we'll call it, in the professions. There are a lot of people who don't like massage therapists, don't like holistic health providers, don't like, you know, it's DOs, which DOs, which are osteopaths, which really function on the chiropractic level, except their influence and original training was based on blood flow, not neurological. But most DOs now have been absorbed by the medical profession, the MD profession. I work with some great MDs and DCs and DOs, but it's still, they're out there a little bit. Well, frankly, my personal physician of 30 years is a DO, and I chose him because he was a DO. Exactly. But, um, in fact, I'm seeing him today. Um, I, I find this really interesting, and I always make this analogy. If you take a garden hose, and the water's flowing, and you kink it, it disrupts that flow. Is that how the body works? Pretty much. I mean, you can kink a garden hose and stop the flow, or you can kink it and still let some flow out. Now, you've got two situations. You've got reduced flow on the far side of the kink, but on the other side of it, everything starts to back up. And so it's still giving you information in an abnormal way to the brain, which the brain has to deal with. Because the body is designed to survive, and there are so many things that affect the way we process information, especially nowadays with stress, or what I like to call stressors, because the minute something stresses your body, your body goes into an immediate fight or flight mechanism. It's gonna to try to fix whatever it can or divert energy to the more vital parts of the body at that so, time. So you're kind of referring to the fight and flight concept? Yeah, and only. That's, and that's what, with cortisol, cortisol and insulin and, and so forth. Every hormone in the body is reacting to that input. That's the trouble. And when you look at the epinephrine, you know, fight or flight was great how many hundreds of years ago when we were living in caves trying to find food and not getting, you and know, not beef food. And beef food, you're right. Yeah. But the thing is now, what do you do? You, if you don't, you can't just go out, hopefully, and beat up the next person. You know, you can't. So you suppress this. But it's, it's, much like, it's much like a short circuit in the system. That short circuit can stay there. The body will adapt to it for a while, but ultimately what happens is something goes wrong. And whether it's your heart, whether it's your kidneys, whether it's your pancreas, whether it's your lungs, whether it's whatever, something is gonna be sacrificed. And how long can it go before that particular part of the body shuts down. Yeah, and you know, stress, is, stress kills. Oh, absolutely. You know, it creates such bodily changes on a cellular level that long-term stress chronically will end up killing you. Uh, that's, a, that's a proven medical fact. So we look at how connected we are with all this technology and all the communication we have. That's something new to us. That's something new to, to this human being body. How does that impact us? Well, when you're talking about that connectivity, I mean, just like right now, we are an electrical being. Everything around us is. Every cell in our body operates at about 0.5 volts. And actually, every cell is a battery. That's exactly there's a, right. There's a north pole and a south pole, a positive pole and a negative pole. And, and the, when that's disrupted, you start having problems on a cellular level. That's right, and the only way that works is every cell communicates with a, an adjoining cell. Those cells are told when to reproduce. They're told if they're bad to die. They try to adapt to whatever's going on. So if I were to ask you right now, or anybody, I want you to go back in time and think about something that was extremely traumatic for you, upsetting to you, frustrating to you, and just get that image in your mind, I guarantee you Whatever the emotion was then will reflexively occur now. You might tighten up, you might get queasy, your stomach might get a little tight. See, a lot of these things are stored in the body. And when they're stored, 
if we react to something or we're next to or a part of a stimulus that's occurring, we can, why did I just get a headache? Why did I get a knot in my stomach? Why did my feet start to ache? That energy, unless it's handled properly or dissipated properly, just keeps replaying much like, well, we don't have, I guess uh, CDs don't exist anymore either, but you know, you hit it on replay and it just keeps going and going and going, but we suppress it until we can't suppress it and now we have chronic headaches, stomach problems, those kind of things. And we sort of, when you talk about energy, there's there's the cellular energy, the energy. I, I mean, a thought process is is a cell is an energy communication. Absolutely. A lot of forms of energy. We can record our heart, our brain activity. We're recording electrical energy constantly. But I had I had an interesting experience one time. I was at a party, and I was talking with somebody. And somebody walked to my back. I had, they were not in my vision, didn't know them. And I suddenly got extraordinarily nauseous. I mean, to the point where I thought I was going to get sick. And I, I had to disrupt my conversation and walked away. The minute I walked away, I felt better. And I started to think, whoever that person was, it was that person. So I talked to another, somebody else at the party. And I said, I just had the most bizarre experience and I told her what had happened and she said I had that same experience with that person so that person's energy must have been a negative type of energy and had been passed <laughs> passed through the airwaves over to me and this other person because we both felt it independently absolutely true we all emit energy you've heard people talk about auras auras are you can you can see them with certain curling photography things like that different colors but here's the thing if you don't believe that, how many times have you been in a room with a child? That child is immediately aware of whether you're somebody they want to be close to or not. Same thing with pets. Animals Pe pets are extremely are, I think even more so more than children. so because kids are generally subconsciously controlled by their adult parents and other people. But an animal, I used to tease people. Little kids, animals and old ladies love being around me. I'm not sure what happened to the rest of the group, but but it's true. You know, we adopted a cat from a, um, uh, what do you call it, a humane society, uh, only because, and I've never had a cat. But this cat, now that it's comfortable, will not leave me alone. It comes and lays by me, it comes in this, and you can literally talk to them. And you know that from all the years you've worked with them. So no, energy is emitted by us constantly, and everybody knows that there's someone around them that they just cringe before even the person says something. Those are people that have a problem, and I wouldn't hang around them too much. See, I, I've had the ma most amazing experience with wild animals, uh, actually, and it has to be that energy exchange. Uh, I even had a lizard when I was hiking in Arizona, and I started, <laughs> all right, I I'm denying this, but I was talking to the lizard, because when you hike, and I, hug, I would hike this mountain almost every day, and all these little lizards, they scatter like because they're, they're food food for hawks, food for other lizards, food for snakes, food for coyotes, they, they jumpy. And I saw a lizard was on a rock and I started talking to it and it's turning its head and it's turning its head like a dog would, doesn't quite understand what you're saying. And uh, I spent some time talking to this lizard because nobody was around. And again, I'm denying, I'll deny it <laughs> in court. But I kept talking to this lizard and sending out these positive thoughts and this lizard literally walked up to me and I was able, I mean, it was literally an inch from me, walked up on a bush that I was standing by. That's a wild animal that knows it's, it's a prey. But from whatever energy I was sending out, probably didn't even know what I was. Just a lot bigger than it was, a lot but bigger it was than safe. It, and it felt safe and came to me. And I spent a half an hour with this lizard, this wild animal crazy. It is crazy, but it's not. People deny the fact that we emit energy all the time. We pick up energy if we're prepared or aware of the fact that that happens. And it's why in so many people that I deal with, now you literally can change the energy flow in your body. You can literally... Thought process can do that? Thought process definitely can do that. And what people don't understand is the heart has 40 
thousand, science has proved this, what they call neurotides, nerve cells, directly connected to the brain. And the heart is the organ that emits the highest frequency of every organ in the body. So to put that in another way, go with your gut, go with your initial heart reaction. When er you're not gonna go wrong. When you decide I'm gonna go analytically and think about this, you know, you have a reaction, oh, well, no, maybe I should do this. Maybe I shouldn't do this. You will always talk yourself out of your initial reaction. The, the digestive system is connected directly to the heart, too, and it comes through the vagus nerve. We know that, which goes to the brain. Well, we know it, but anyway. That's why people get nauseated if they have a car accident. They hit their, their neck. Or they, see, or they see a police officer. In the, well, that, too. The, in the yeah. Oh, my mirror. goodness. You know, yeah, they're you guilty get... before. And that's, you know what? That's the stored energy of the last time you were speeding and didn't get caught, and now you see that police officer, and you go, you know, when they go past you. That's right. They're defunding them anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you look at chiropractic care, and I, I want to talk a little bit more about that. That's an alignment from a subluxation? Subluxations are minor misalignments. And people get, and that's why medicine and chiropractic had such a hard time before, because medical doctors call subluxations dislocations. And a dis, if, if a joint moves back and forth, okay, and it gets stuck, in the chiropractic world, that's a subluxation or a fixation. And some people say, well, it's out of place. No, if it was out of place, that's a dislocation, and you better go to an ER and, and have And that it may require surgery or Absolutely. something to get it back in. Absolutely. So it's a totally, totally different uh, right. ailment. So you come to a chiropractor, and you're really trying to get everything in alignment so that flow of energy is, is continuous and constant. Right. And not, not disrupted. And at the same time, you have to look at posture. You have to look at muscle imbalances because the spine without muscle, well, without muscles, we'd fall over in a pile of nothing on the floor and figure it out. But see, a lot of people have altered posture and don't realize it. People that are right-handed, which the majority of people are, don't realize they're right-legged dominant also. Mm -hmm. In fact, go ride a bike. You'll push harder with your dominant leg than you will your other one. Now, if you walk around, and I do this, I can't help it, I've been doing it for so long. But I can, I'll see somebody in a restaurant and I'll see somebody walking down the, like around when I was waiting for the show to start. Oh, they've got a right hip issue. They're, they walk to the right, their shoulders lower than the left. You can see the shoulders, I can see the head. In fact, often somebody will come into the office and they'll be complaining about the temporomandibular joint or TMJ problem. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I do is I, I look at you know, their bite and so forth, but one of the first things I do is send them to a chiropractor that knows how to adjust the head and neck. It's interesting because, um, in fact, I had a, a client, a healthcare client that I work with that had been to, they had all of their teeth removed and they had the oh, dentures yeah. put in, right? Okay. And the thing was causing a problem. They were getting headaches, they were getting everything else. So they went to another specialist, not the same person that made it, which I don't understand, but so they would start grinding down the and the gentleman's talking to me about this, right? But unfortunately, it wasn't working. I swear, I said, well, let me look at that. And when he opened and closed his mouth, his jaw tracked off to one side. Okay, well, the jaw was tracking off to one side not because of what was there. It was because the skull bones had moved a little bit. Yeah. Well, we, we do translate when we, when we chew and talk sure, and so right. forth. So like a dog will open and close yep. like this. We, we do this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The problem, if one joint wears or is inflamed exactly right. or, or the muscle, because muscles have memory. Oh, yeah. Um, and the problem occurs and then it's, it's a constant issue. And that's where you start developing the, the headaches because of this trigeminal nerve that goes up there. Right. So, so you, again, you're talking about that alignment. But one of the things that, you know, I, I was never a person that would like to take supplements. I mean, now I spend more on my supplements than they do on food. But chiropractors were probably the first medical group to adopt the necessity of supplementing your diet with a vitamin or a mineral or an herb. And now you go to a physician's office, what supplements are you taking? Well, they'll say they don't do anything. Well, if they don't do anything, why do you need to know what I'm taking? Or why are there certain medications that, oh, if you're taking this medication that's been scripted pharmaceutically, you better not take that supplement. So th there's still that counter, uh, I don't want to say contraindication. Contradiction. That's a contra the contradiction is the word I wanted to use, thank you, uh, from the medical profession. But you guys were early adopters. We were early adopters because we, we operate on the basis of 
do it naturally. Find out what you can do to take control of your health, your body, whether it's emotional, whether it's food, whether it's activity, whatever it is, whether it's, you know, and the, when I say emotional, I mean the mental component of it. What do you think about? Be careful what you think about because you will attract it. I know that seems weird well, to people. You're familiar with kinesiology? Yes. I, 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 knew, I knew the answer to that. That's, you know, an attorney once said, don't ever ask a question you don't know the answer to. Exactly right. <laughs> I, I, we've had many conversations. So would you explain the audience what kinesiology is? Interesting about kinesiology. Kinesiology is really the, mus is the function of the muscle system. But, but you can ask the body a question. You can put um, something in the hand. Okay, so you come over here to, you test this bicep muscle. You tell me, okay, I'm going to ask you to resist, which means I want you to hold it there, okay? So if you do that, and we say, okay, ready, resist, and you push down, you can hold it. If I put something in this hand that is toxic to you, and if I say hold that, and I go do it, you can't do it. The arm will drop off because you're overloading that nervous system with a negative charged particle or supplement. Because everything from this chair to this table has energy. Right, and there's a frequency to the vibration of it. And what does the vibration do? It causes wave changes in the universe. When something breaks like a glass right. and it hits the ground, you could drop a glass and it doesn't break, and you drop that same glass or another glass similar to it and it breaks, it's because it hit a frequency that fractured it. That's right. And the first time it didn't, the second time it did. And I think that's a difficult concept, but I read when I was in college at W and J years ago, I, well, a long time ago now, um, a book on kinesiology, and I did it at my fraternity parties as a joke. You'd put take envelopes and you'd put coffee, you'd put sugar, salt, wh whatever it was, and you'd do that little muscle testing, and people laughed at how do you do that? How do you do that? Because you wouldn't put any more pressure, same amount of pressure, and they couldn't resist. They couldn't hold their arm up. And then something that was good for them, they were able to resist and hold their arm up. And I didn't know why. I mean, you know, to me it was a joke too, but there's, there's actually a, a science behind it now. Well, there is. And, and they've proven a lot of things with what we used to call strange, weird, or out of the loop. Um, I don't know what kids call it today, but that's what I call it. But the point is, everything is connected energetically. We are in a quantum universe it's all energy particles and we are affected by it and we can affect them so if you have a high sugar diet poor nutrition you're messing up that energy flow absolutely and you're you're causing this and which will actually lower your voltage in your body it does and it causes strange chemical reactions to take place in your body so what i found in my years of study never taught this in school and i don't think there is not one medical school that teaches this. If you keep yourself alkaline, you keep yourself healthy. If you, if you end up becoming acidic, you end up getting sick. Diseases live in an acidic environment. And that in lies the problem with most of our health issues because everything we do, things we're consuming, processed foods, chemicals, the amount of sugar is incredible. Sugar makes you acidic like instantly. You, you change that pH of your body and your, your energy, your electrical that you talked about on the cellular level and you become ill. Exactly right. And people don't understand that every compound has an energy frequency to it. So, and sugar, by the way, is, is so toxic to the body not only sugar, but be careful of diet things because they're, sometimes they're worse. They're worse. Chemicalized sugar is not good for you. And by the way, if you put a chemical in it, it's kind of like a vaccine with uh, antifreeze in it. It can tend to cause problems later on. Really? So, no, I'm sorry, but it yeah. does. Yeah, it works in your car. But, but and it, it's like a lot of people have wheat allergies. Why? It's because, and gluten is, I mean, wheat, pastas, things like that, carbohydrates, low density carbohydrates have it, you're almost everybody and I want to use the word allergic but they have a reaction to it it just depends on how long you've taken it and then eventually the body can't deal with it anymore so uh, same thing with fatty acids same things with uh, deep fried foods which are all polyunsaturated fats right I mean it's the fact is your body has to work real hard 
and it, it takes it as a toxin. It takes it as an insult. It would be like if I started hitting you in the arm. You know, I could do that for a while, and you could put up with it. Now, if I didn't stop and you didn't pull away, eventually your brain would shut that down and you wouldn't feel it. If I kept doing it, eventually your brain would go, what the heck is wrong with you? And you'd pull away and it would be inflamed and hurt. Same thing that happens with us when we get sick over a chronic period of time. You don't just get sick the minute the symptoms occur. You are getting sick, but you don't have the symptoms yet. And that's why it's so important to not only pay attention to what you eat, what you breathe, but what you think about and what you focus on. You couldn't be more right, and it's the necessity to supply the body with what it needs to stay healthy and to keep that energy and that pH at a certain thing. Thyroid is extremely important to that, and maybe we could talk a little bit about that. But just to kind of put a closure to that kinesiology thing, I did a test on somebody just, just to sh prove a point with them. And we had him stand straight, hands down, and then put his hand up. And I said, I want you to say, I love myself. And he said, I love myself. I couldn't put it down. I said, I want you to say, I hate myself. The minute he said, I hate myself, his arm came down. And he said, do that again. I said, okay, I love myself. Say it. He goes, I love myself. His arm stayed up. Say, I hate myself. Arm went right down. A thought changed his whole body chemistry. Absolutely, it did. Therefore, it changed the energy? It changed the energy. And therefore, the energy altered now affects the nervous system in total. It affects the specific organs. All of it will short circuit eventually. And that will end up leading to illness, sy symptoms, dis ease. Dis ease. As we That's call what, it. you know, it's interesting. We call it disease, but it's actually dis ease. It's the body out of hemeostasis, out of balance. Exactly. And everything we do kind of does that. We sit too much, we tilt our heads on our cell phones too much, we're looking at computers too much. Maybe we even work out too much. And then we look at diet, we get ourselves in trouble. Well, the digital component today, they have an illness that's, uh, it, the American Psychiatric Society came up with a diagnostic code for digital dementia in children because of the closeness of the tablets and the phones are on all day long. Not to mention the, the rays, radiation well, and so forth coming off all that right. stuff. I New mean, you know, I, I'm, I'm always an early adapter on that stuff and then I, it does nothing but frustrate me afterwards. Dr. Fiber, we're gonna go to a little break here. We'll be back and we're gonna get in a little more depth on the on this energy process. We'll be back with Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed with Dr. Gary Fiber. Welcome back to Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed. I'm Dr. Edmund Sokowski, and we're here with my good friend, Dr. Gary Fiver, talking about health and wellness and your energy and your energy flow and how energy, or maybe your lack of it, is what's making you sick. So, Dr. Fiver, there's a lot of things we're going to get here in the second half of the show, hopefully. Time always runs by so quick. But uh, I want to talk about oxygen because we were kind of during the break talking a little about it. Oxygen is important. Without it, we die. Right. Why? Well, oxygen actually, when it reacts with certain things, breaks down into its component parts, and guess what? It create. There's a normal reaction called an oxidative stress reaction, right? You have to create these different molecules with a charge on them because they go after toxins in the body. They create inflammatory responses, which are normal. The problem with it is if you're com consuming bad food, if you're under too much stress, if you're whatever you're doing that's negative, you get this oxidative stress reaction that now starts to tear down the body. And again, it's all about electrical charge, but you gotta go back to science to remember those valences with electrons. Because just, just as a recap, every cell in our body is a positive north pole, negative south pole. So we, we're effectively a battery and without oxygen and water, in other words, you've got to be hydrated at the same time. Oh, for sure. Your battery can't hold a charge. 
That's right. And I mean, when you look at water, hydrogen, oxygen, okay. So you got always got those two hydrogen molecules with oxygen, right? H2O. And if that's out of balance, the cell will shrink. The cell shorts out. The cell will eventually die, which is why most people walking around today are dehydrated mm -hmm. because they don't drink water or they don't drink enough of it. And surprisingly, you get dehydrated faster in cold temperature than you do even in hot temperature. That's right. Obviously, because even though you're sweating, your body's working through that homeostasis. But in cold, that's why alcohol dehydrates people. And in the wintertime, it's really bad. Coffee and teas are dehydrator. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you shouldn't drink them. Right. But because they actually have a lot of benefits depending on what, what the coffee is, what the tea is. But you can easily turn a, a dehydrating coffee or tea into a hydrator by adding a little bit of fat, a little bit of coconut oil, MCT oil, butter, is it not mm. margarine. Real butter. Real butter in a, in a little bit of coffee or heavy cream into that coffee, into that tea, and that makes it a hydrator. And the reason for that is your body wants to absorb that fat. Right, and even if you would just think about drinking more water, and I'm not talking about tap water, unless of course you haven't had water in four days. I'm talking about pH balanced water, which is still not what you find in most bottled water. You've got to go to a higher pH. Uh, you just feel better. I've had people that have had chronic headaches. I just ask them how much water they drink without doing anything else. Double your water consumption, their headaches go away. It's un People don't pay any attention to it. No. That's the problem because they're not taught it and there's too many things. I mean, diet soda, regular soda, those kind of things oh, are right. most dehydrating well, things. Well, they'll say I drank a soda. Well, that's not a hydrator. No, it goes the other way around. And if it, sugar is a dehydrator. Before they used to have batteries like they have now in cars, and I'm not talking about electric cars, I'm talking about regular batteries. You used to be able to add water to those batteries. Gee whiz, because those chemical reactions that took place to create the charge. Needed the water. Needed the water. Now they have this gel stuff in there and you can't change them. So my two-year-old car, when the battery died last week, like right now, and I'm at this restaurant, not only did the battery cost three times as much as the one I could add water to, but they, I, the guy told me, said, oh, they don't last a year, year and a half, two years maybe. I'm going, and the point of this is what? Again, we try to make things simple, but in making them simple, we overcomplicate everything. It's been two years since you got that car already. I know. Let's wow. See. Time flies when we're having fun, That's I guess. That's right, yeah. I don't, no kidding. We haven't been having fun, though. Um, oh, well, yeah. So, so water, oxygen, and this concept of, of a battery in our cell, because that's what our cell is. So we have to supply all of that. We have to supply those nutrients, the, the nutrition, the water, the oxygen, and, and that's how we keep our pH up. So you mentioned pH water. And I've been using pH water of 9.5 for 12 years now, if not longer. I, I'll say average of 12 years. And I've heard so much about this pH water, but that's all I drink. What does it do? Well, directly it does nothing. And you can Google pH water on, online. It'll say, you're wasting your money because it costs more. It doesn't do anything for you. And you know what? I agree. Not that you're wasting your money. I agree that directly it doesn't do anything for you. But what it does do is your stomach acid, and your st should be around 2.5, 3.0, depending on, on you, the minute you drink that alkaline water, you alkalinize that acid. What happens, your body needs to compensate because your body, as Dr. Fiber said, always is going to that balance, that hemostasis. So your pancreas and your small intestine just respond to your stomach making new acid. And that response is sodium bicarbonate. And that sodium bicarbonate alkalizes you just enough to keep you at that healthy level. If you're drinking regular tap water, which is about seven and neutral, has no impact like that. If you're drinking acidic water, no impact because you're actually putting more city, you know, anything that's acidic, like soda pop, for example. You're putting that in there, your stomach's not making any, so, any more acid, so that pancreas and your small intestines aren't making any sodium bicarbonate. So you're, you're now getting more acid into your blood. You don't want to be over alkalized, but it's almost impossible, literally impossible to become too alkaline. Well, because it's water, the body will adapt to it and do what it needs to do with it. 
Well, everything you do, the air you breathe makes you acidic, the food you eat make you acidic, uh, animal products make you acidic. Only dark greens, those dark leafy greens, they they're, will make you a little more alkaline. That most people don't like to eat. No, and most people don't like to eat, yeah. You're right. So, so most, you know, the, the diet, the set, standard American diet is a sad diet. It is because why? It's con made to be convenient. I mean, if you go to shelf life, by the way, go to the grocery store. Anybody go to the grocery store. Everything on the inside of those aisles, look at the expiration date on the packages. When you got cereal that lasts a year, chances are the nutrients aren't real good for you. In fact, you'd be better off chewing on the box on because the, box. the cellulose would, cellulose would help your digestion. That's a lot track. of pet food too like that. Ugh. But, you know, nowadays, those cells in the center are empty. Are empty. Right. So, you know, it's, it's a scary time we're living in, I have to say. But, you know, same thing, and, and I know I don't like to pick on soda because I haven't had soda in so many years because if I drink it every, I mean, four years ago, I thought, oh, I'll have a Coke with some lime in it. I felt like crap afterwards. That's a medical term, by the way. But yeah. if, you, if you have a coin collection or you have anything tarnished, drop it in Coca-Cola, Pepsi, whatever it is, and it will take the tarnish off of it. Including the bumpers of your car. If exactly you right, bumper. and it works. Now, what does it do to you? I know people like it, I, but that's an addictive quality. Why do you think they put the sugars and the chemicals in there? And by the way, we've talked about it. Sugar, refined sugar, binds the same receptor sites in the brain as cocaine does. Yes, it does. So you get this high until you crash. Yep, and then that's the addiction format of it. That's right, and there's sugar and everything. Why is there sugar and everything? Because it's addicting. Including ketchup. Oh, yeah. If you actually stop and look, there's sugar in some form in just about everything that's processed. Yeah, look at most labels. Labels, Carbohydrates, sugars, okay? Not only is the- Corn syrup. Corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup. Why? Because it tastes better. MSG, which isn't a sugar, monosodium glutamate, which they put in a lot of food for flavor, it's a salt, basically, but, what it does, it's there to preserve it and to change the flavor. So if you eat it, a lot of it, guess what? Your body's gonna react to it and get. Since you brought that up, that's actually a neurotoxin MSG. That's right. And we're talking about s cells and we're talking about energy flow. We're, 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 we're talking about something now that can impact that. Uh, wasn't on my process of talking about actually today, but I'm glad you brought it up because MSG can actually be naturally formed and could actually be organic. Doesn't mean it's good for you. Yeah, the whole, the, that's the problem is we don't learn this stuff. Then you get people like us who talk about it and people think we're a little crazy. But on the other hand, if they actually listen to us, they'll actually feel better. The body is designed to heal itself. Think about that. When you cut your finger and put a Band-Aid on it, does the Band-Aid heal the finger or the cut? Not normally, it just keeps the blood from getting all over you. So while your body, I mean, you can hit you all day long, you can cut your fingers, you can do all this other stuff, you can have people yell at, in fact, how many of you feel good when somebody just yells at you, or screams at you, or gets mad at you? You don't feel good, it immediately changes your body chemistry, which immediately changes all the electrical connections in your body, because you go into this fight or float, flight, I know you want to beat them up or run over them, but something like that, but you can't, so you suppress it. So this whole thing, it changes your hydration levels, changes your blood sugar levels, changes your blood pressure. All of this is neurological, it's energy getting out of sync to ultimately protect you momentarily. So every organ, your skin included, which is your largest organ, your skin is an organ, every organ in your body, every cell in your body functions at a different electrical potential. Correct. So if you look, say, liver, take your liver, for example, your liver is nothing more than a collection of one particular cell. Mm -hmm. Kidneys is another collection. They're all operating at different pH levels and different energy voltages. Right. So if I take a hammer that I now call Pelosi, oh, when, I, <laughs> when I take a hammer, I, I apologize for that. I and I hit my finger, my finger is gonna hurt like heck, it's gonna swell up, and it's gonna turn red. Mm -hmm. The reason it does that is not because the, the hammer hit it, it's 
because my body is now responding to the damage that the hammer just did, and it's sending a bunch of things, and it changed the voltage. And that voltage goes, that, and I don't know what the voltage of the tip of my finger is. Let's say it's a minus 10. It takes that to a, a minus 50 to try to heal it. And it'll be red and throbbing until it starts to heal and that voltage starts going from that minus 50 to that minus 10 where it should be. Interesting thing is, all cancers are on that plus side. Yeah, it is interesting, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So we think of plus as good and, ne and negative minus as negative is, is not so good, but it's actually the opposite in the body. We want to be toward that negative side. Right, and, that, and that's the case. Um, most organs, and the, the, the heart emits the highest frequency in the body. It's 0.1 hertz, 0.1. But alter that for any length of time, you're going to have heart problems. Interesting enough, medical science has found a spot in the heart that operates at a different frequency than the rest of the heart. And they can't isolate it because it's not stationary, so it moves. They don't know why, they don't know what it is, but it's universally found in the heart. Interesting enough, the Hopis, the Native American, the Hopi tribe, they feel that our spirits live in that energy in the heart, and they identify the energy of the heart and the energy of our, perne our pineal gland. And they say that we have two life forms in us. And I, I don't want to get into that. I'm not real versed on that anyway, but I've read enough about it. Uh, this energy spot in our heart and energy spot here it, at the base of the brain. Absolutely right. And they, there's, there's arguments for years about the pineal gland doing anything or not. You want to try something next time you have a headache or you feel stressed? Put your fingers up here, close your eyes, and just slowly massage, massage them. And I guarantee you, if you focus on that, you'll feel better. So there's something that you know I, I like to focus on, and that's the thyroid. Because that is our voltage regulator. Yep. If you have a brand new car, and you have a good battery in your, in your new car, and your voltage re regulator is bad, your car won't run. That's right. The very same thing happens to you. If your thyroid is not functioning properly, there's no way you can have the voltage energy in your body to be healthy, to be well. For every one of your cells to have that correct amount of voltage within that, their own individual batteries. So, in my opinion, the thyroid is probably the most misunderstood organ in the body and probably the undiagnosed, mistreated, mismedicated, whatever you want to call it. Uh, issue that most people have. And the reason I say that is, if that thyroid was functioning properly, you wouldn't have a lot of the diseases that we have. You're right. There are a lot of aspects to it because you have to supply the things the thyroid needs to make because the thyroid makes hormones. Hormones in particular, and I'll talk briefly about it, and you can talk along with me. But part of the problem is you could have a defective liver or defective kidney, but mostly it's, this is done in the liver, whatever the thyroid makes, it gets converted in the liver and then sent back to the body. So if your liver is not right, if, if the cells are damaged and you're not producing the proper energy within that liver, you cannot utilize the thyroid hormone. So which came first, the thyroid problem or the liver problem? Uh, it's hard, it's hard it's to say. Hard Sometimes to say. you can look and say that it was a thyroid issue, but, but there are other factors, including your gut, because the gut that we know is the second brain talks to the thyroid and the thyroid talks to the gut. A lot of times, you know, you mentioned gluten earlier. If you have a gluten problem, some problem something we call celiac sprue, or even sensitivity, and I will tell you that most people are sensitive to gluten, it messes the thyroid up in its function. Because the feedback is, the feedback loop is immediate. You know, we talk about Oh, my computer didn't boot up fast enough. Well, your brain and your nervous system and your hormone levels are going much faster than that. Just any stimulus to your body, any, good or bad, it's already been handled, it's already been processed, and a signal's already been sent to normalize or 
get back to homeostasis. And when I brought up the which came first, the thyroid or the liver, the reason I did that is because, oh, do you have a liver problem? Good, let's give you medication for the liver. Oh, do you have a thyroid problem? Let's give you medication for that. Let's not find out what it is that's causing it. Let's just medicate it. Well, you know, one of the big things that, that I see all the time, cholesterol medications. And there's, this is a whole nother show, but that turned out to be false. It was a paid, paid article in order to sell more medication. I've talked about this a few times on this show, actually, definitely on the radio show. Your hormones are made from cholesterol. Your brain is 70% cholesterol. So you lower your cholesterol, how are you making your hormones? So how are you making that thyroid hormone, the, the T1, T2, T3, T4? How are you doing that? Well, you're not. You're not, not as well. And if that thyroid isn't making the hormones, you're certainly not gonna have enough to process even in a healthy liver. And I, I'm gonna tell you what, a lot of people don't have healthy livers. All of a sudden you don't have the pH, and you don't have the energy, the cellular energy. I'm not talking about energy to, to get up and dance. I'm talking oh, about health and cellular function. But here. eventually you won't have the energy to get up and walk, no, much right. less dance. So, so you look at why are we given cholesterol medications? And I question every time. And then, then, then these cholesterol medications stop the production of CoQ10, which you kind of do as you get older anyway. And now these older people that are on the cholesterol medications are never been told to take CoQ10. When you're in my practice, and I, you know, I, I get a list of your medications all the time, and I kind of work that into the conversation. Oh, my physician never told me that. Well, maybe you might want to ask your physician about it or why they never told you about it, you know? It, it's interesting. You've got to support that body in order to have the function and that cellular energy for you to be well. It's a simple analogy, maybe it's too simplified, but if you put bad gas in your car, it's not gonna run very well. Eventually it'll fall apart. But people aren't told that because the money drives the direction of what's going on. The pharmaceutical can is, look, I, if I had a life-saving, a life-threatening problem, I would take a life-saving medication if it would keep me alive until I figured out what was wrong. Right. But just to take a medication for years, go ask a pharmacist you know, many of them, oh, my brother, who's got more health problems because he doesn't listen to me, but that's okay, it's his choice. He's been on the same meds for years, and I spend more time talking to his cardiologist, his kidney specialist, his regular doctor, his other doctors, because you know what? They don't talk to each other. No. And that's the scary part. Medicine has become compartmentalized. Exactly. Say, right? but compartmentalized, yeah. Compartmentalized, You're right. that's what I, yeah. Um, and nobody communicates with one another. And, and Nobody knows basically what drug you're on and they're prescribing drugs that are contraindicated with them. And, and what people don't realize, every scripted medication is toxic to your body. I don't care what it is, antibiotic, blood pressure pill, water pill, you name it, it is toxic to your body. I'm not saying you don't need to be on them. I'm not telling you to stop them. Definitely I'm not right. telling you to do that. I'm just saying that these medications have consequences. And if you can support your body without a medication or lower the dose of that medication, you're definitely benefiting your health and wellness. Well, and one of the reasons it's toxic is because of what they do to bind the stuff together, what they make the capsule out of, what they make the tablet out of. You're absolutely correct. And I've never heard anybody mention that before, but I'm gonna give you an example of it. So there's a medication, it's a mood altering medication called lithium, right? Everybody knows that it's lithium. And it's lithium carbonate, very toxic, a lot of side effects, has some purpose. But you know what, I take lithium every day, although I forgot to take it this morning. I take something called lithium orotate. And why do I do that? Well, every, just about every cell in your body has a lithium receptor site. We don't have lithium in our diets. It's not in anything not in a plant, it's not in animal food, it's not in an egg, there's no lithium there. But yet you ever, you have a, your body requires lithium. See, the problem is that you're right, and I'm not knocking medical professionals. What the problem is, is they're never trained in it, no. and they don't know, although studies show now more, quote, capital medical providers take supplements than 
in a higher percentage, over 65%, and only about 30% ever talk to their patients about it. So They're learning this from their patients. I exactly right, and they're getting it, and it makes sense. But again, remember, and again, I don't have any pharmaceutical stock, a lot of people may, but the pharmaceutical industry dictates what the insurance companies will pay for, and these poor medical providers have to, to operate that way. And I'm not making this up. You can go talk to your medical providers. I have conversation with them all the time. And they don't really know. And that's sad. So people like you that do these shows, and people like us that sometimes are looked at as a little crazy, one way or the other, we've been doing this all our lives. And when you can take somebody off of, or have their medical doctor take them off of something as you remove, like the lithium you're talking about. That's the difference. Yeah, I want to finish it. This lithium orotate, orotate is what's in mother's milk. It's a delivery system. And I take a small amount of, of lithium. It's like, I don't know, three milligrams, maybe four. Um, very small amount. And I take it every day unless I forget to take it, which isn't often. Because I'm providing, not because I need it because I'm some psycho or I'm having some emotional problem or any of that kind of stuff. It's, it's, or I'm, I'm to have anxiety. Um, I actually deal with all that pretty well. But maybe it's because for years I've been taking that little bit of lithium. Because years ago when I was researching something, I came upon these, the fact that we have these lithium receptor sites, but no lithium in our diet. So where are you getting lithium? And the carriers you mentioned, carbonate makes it toxic, but that's the prescription form of it. You can't get it over the counter lithium carbonate or what we know as lithium. Lithium orate you can buy over the counter. You can't, you're not gonna find it everywhere, right. but you, you, it's bought over the counter because it has no negative side effects. But yet you're supplying those receptor sites that, you, that need it. Right, and you don't have to, t I mean, I see people in YouTube, too, man, they've taken hundreds of dollars of uh, supplements a month, but they also don't know what supplements to buy. And again, Supplements are supplements, um, and I don't, I'm don't. i not going to bring any names up, but you got to read the label. If there's more binding agents in it than the product, it probably isn't real good for you. And how they're processed, where the raw materials are sourced. Right. You know, some, well, some people say, I won't buy anything from China. Well, a lot of these raw materials only come from China. Yeah. You know, uh, but people don't realize most of the vitamin C that we get, which is ascorbic acid, is from China and synthesize, it's not even natural. I'm not saying it doesn't have benefit, I'm just saying that that's where it comes from. Right. But on this energy stuff that we're trying to do in order to stay healthy and, and well, you've got to supply the wrong ingredients for your body to do what it needs to do. Oh, there's no doubt, because you can short circuit your body. I mean, if you alter energy flow, hey, if I put a rubber band around your finger, and you were talking about your finger before, and your finger starts, if I do it lightly, Hey, you get a little difficult. It's no big deal. Okay, what if I left it there for a month? Your finger die and fall off. Because why? Eventually, the body will protect itself for the greater good. It, it's the same thing. That's why people get sick, or they all of a sudden wake up and they're sick, or they develop a heart problem, or they develop a kidney problem. Why? It's because, look back 10 years, look back five years. There's something that wasn't being done, or they were short on something. Or too much of something or, else. Right, or it's an excess, or it's a deficiency, and the body will deal that for a long time. I mean, that's why people get sick, and all of a sudden, what happened? Well, when you go back and talk to them, it's exactly what we're talking about. How much water do you drink? I don't know, maybe a glass a day, really. Where do you get that? Oh, the faucet, oh, okay. Along with the fluoride and the chlorine and all the chemicals the and the drugs that never get processed. Oh, out that's of, another out scary out thing, yeah. yeah. The amount of drugs in our water. Yeah. So, if you could give five things that we need to do, and that's, not a, that's a short list for sure, to try to stay well, what would those five things be? Probably the number one thing is you have to be interested enough to be educated. You have to take a look at what's going on. <laughs> that's, that's so key. You think education? Yeah. Right. Just ask questions. Now, not everything's on Google, but you can find most things. Dr. Google. Yeah, Dr. Google, right. You can actually go to, actually, a lot of the stuff's on PubMed. We only have a couple of minutes, so. Okay, I'll, I'll quit making jokes. But, but number one, look at your diet. How much of your diet's packaged? How much of your diet's preserved? You go through the drive-through two or three times a day, chances are you're not eating healthy, okay? Increase your water. 
They always used to say increase water. Half your body weight in water. Okay, try, okay? Start to focus mentally on not going into agreement with everything that stresses you out. Pick five things that stress you out. What's the reason it stresses you out? And what's the benefit to you? And eliminate them, whether, whether, it's, whether it be a person or a thing. Just gonna say hey, that, could be show. people. That's right. Dr. Gary Farber, that his contact information was uh, on our screen throughout the show. I know you're wel you welcome any, any communication from people, any help Absolutely. you can do to help them. Gary, thank you so much for coming. You're by. welcome. Remember, you can listen to me every Saturday morning live with call-in questions on AM 1250, The Answer, at 9 o'clock on the Health and Wellness with Dr. Ed, the radio show.